Lasiodora periabana, known in the hobby as the salmon pink bird eater, is a New World terrestrial tarantula that is endemic to northeastern Brazil. This species is argued to be the third or fourth largest tarantula in the world, growing anywhere from 9 to 11 inches, with most only being about 8 to 9 inches in length. The Salmon Pink Bird Eater is a very fast-growing tarantula and can reach adult sizes in as little as two years and has a lifespan of up to 15 years. Females can produce sacs that have anywhere from 1,200 to 3,000 eggs. And I thought my wife had a big family. Though this tarantula is large, its venom is not known to be medically significant, so the fangs would be potentially more painful than the venom. This species does possess urticating hairs, like most New World tarantulas, but I find this species' hairs to be nearly as uncomfortable as the T. blondi or Brachypelma baimi. Even as a juvenile, while rehousing this tea, I got some urticating hairs on my hands and it drove me crazy with itching and burning and swelling for nearly two weeks. Though this species isn't particularly defensive, in fact, they're pretty docile. They will kick hairs when they feel threatened. But the real threat of getting hairs on your skin is when rehousing. This tea is known for kicking hair on its webbing around its burrow. So if you are emptying out the substrate while cleaning an enclosure, or moving substrate around in the enclosure, you are at risk of kicking up those hairs into the air or coming in direct contact with them. That is why any time I am rehousing or cleaning an old enclosure that used to house a species in the Lassiodora genus, I take precautions to protect myself. I wear thick nitrile gloves and even eye protection, and long sleeve shirts if I really think the risk is high. I even take these precautions when dealing with the spiderlings. Now if you look down below in the description of this video, I've got a link to my Amazon store where I have all of the items I use, like the gloves and the goggles, right there available for you to check out. I house my spiderling Lassiodora species in a basic terrestrial spiderling enclosure made of acrylic. This species tends to prefer to burrow deep as slings, so I normally use an enclosure that is taller than longer, but fill it at least two-thirds of the way up with substrate so there is more length, or as much length as possible, than there is height. This gives the sling plenty of room to burrow down and not too much space to climb up and risk injury from a fall. I pour water down opposite corners of the enclosure so it seeps down into the bottom layer, providing a gradient of moisture to the substrate. The deeper the sling burrows, the more damp the substrate becomes. This gives the sling the ability to choose the moisture level of substrate it prefers while keeping the humidity level optimal for a sling and providing a layer of dry substrate on the top. Once the sling begins to outgrow its enclosure, I move it into one of two types of juvenile acrylic enclosures. One is a 4x4x4 box with top and side ventilation that I use for the slings that seem to have preferred to spend most of their time deep in their burrows. Again, I fill the enclosure at least two thirds of the way up with substrate, and I treat the substrate in the same way I did the spiderling's enclosure. The other style of enclosure I've had a lot of success with is a long but short four by five by six acrylic enclosure that I purchased from a local hobby store that has since gone out of business. These enclosures are great, especially since this tea is such a fast grower, as they give enough depth for the tea to burrow, but also plenty of room for them to move around. I use this setup particularly for the specimens that seem to spend more time outside of their burrows while they were slings. I still pour some water down the corner, enough to keep the lower level of substrate damp while the top remains dry, and opt for more side ventilation than top ventilation in this particular setup. For both types of enclosures, I am sure to provide a water dish and hide for the bird eaters. When this enclosure is beginning to get too small and it's time to rehouse them again, I make the jump to a large adult enclosure for its final home. Again, this tea is a fast grower, so it may seem a little large at first, but within a few molds, they seem to fill out the enclosure nicely. I tend to use 10 gallon aquariums or an Exoterra medium low enclosure that measures 24 by 18 by 12. And I'm always mindful of keeping the water dish clean and full, as I see this tea drink from its dish more often than any other tarantula in my collection. This tea is a voracious eater at any stage of growth. 
As spiderlings, I feed them pre-killed small crickets till they're over a half inch in size. Then I feed them one small cricket once or twice a week until they're in pre-molt or their abdomen becomes too large. For juveniles, I will feed them three to four medium crickets every week until they stop showing interest in eating as they approach pre-molt. I will feed a few more crickets a week if they're looking underfed and a few less if they appear to be getting chunky. And for adults, I feed eight to 10 large crickets every week or two, again more or less depending on the size of the abdomen and the appetite. And I switch it up sometimes with larger super worms, green horn worms, or even a few large dubia roaches. There is a lot of talk online about feeding them a pinky mouse or house gecko once or twice a year, but that is something I normally do not engage in. Not because of fear of a potential calcium buildup or any real ethical reason. It is just any time you feed your tea a vertebrate prey, there is a nasty mess to clean up. And if you don't clean the mess up promptly, then there is a real risk of issues with mold and mites. That being said, at least once I have fed my El Periabana a small feeder lizard, but it isn't something that I would make a habit of doing and not something I highly suggest trying. This is a large, hardy, and beautiful tarantula that stays out on display most of the time as an adult. They are not aggressive or defensive, but I would not suggest trying to handle this species for a few different reasons. The first reason being that they have nasty urticating hairs that would be miserable to deal with if they kick them on you, or even if they just brushed off onto your skin. The second and probably most important reason is that this tea is so large as an adult that if you were to handle it and accidentally dropped it from almost any height, it could be fatal for your tarantula. Even being as steady and careful as possible, tarantulas are prone to suddenly burst in movement for short distances when startled or when they perceive a threat of any kind and it isn't something that you'd be able to react to fast enough to keep the tea safe. So handle at your own risk and at your tea's possible peril. This is another great staple in the hobby and the Salmon Pink Bird Eater is usually widely available and very affordable. Now, a lot of you all suggested this species to me in the comments of previous videos, so I'm glad I was able to get this taken care of for you. Now, if there's a species you'd like to see me cover in a future episode of Tarantula Tuesday, just leave your suggestion down below in the comments. I'll put it on the list and I'll get to it as soon as I can. And I want to thank everyone that's been liking and subscribing. We just crossed 2,600 subscribers. It's a really exciting milestone. Now, many of you all probably noticed that there was more than just the Lossiodora periabana in there. I also had a Lossiodora difficilis and a Lossiodora klugi. Now, the husbandry for all three of these species is essentially the same. I keep them all the same way. They're just spread out from spiderlings to adults in my collection. But no matter what size they are, my biggest tip is gonna to be to make sure they've got plenty of substrate. Cause I know the spiderling loves to dig all the way down to the bottom of its enclosure and the adult likes to climb the sides of the walls and across the top. So I gotta make sure in all cases that there's enough substrate that they don't fall and hurt themselves. And if you don't have one of these species and you're thinking about getting it, I highly suggest it. It's great for beginners all the way up to experienced keepers. Just be sure you're aware how big this tea is gonna get. And I suggest getting them as a sling because they will grow quickly and it's so much cheaper to buy a spiderling as opposed to an adult tarantula. Now, if you plan on keeping your adult in a 10 gallon aquarium like I have mine in, be sure that you're subscribed because I'm gonna be putting out a video very soon that's gonna show you how I make tarantula safe lids for those types of enclosures. Also got some exciting top 10 lists and a few other do-it-yourself videos coming. So be sure to stay tuned. And I want to thank everyone that's been liking and subscribing. That means a whole lot to me. So thank you so much for all your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video and you think I did my job well, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to support the channel more, go ahead and subscribe and share this video with your friends. And if you want to get a cool Tarantula Collective shirt like this, just go to my website, thetarantulacollective.com. I've got all the different merch there. There's baseball shirts, t-shirts, hoodies, all kinds of cool stuff. And you'll also find links there to the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and Patreon communities. 
And a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters like Jeff Summerhill. You guys are freaking awesome. You know, sometimes I just get overwhelmed and a little busy and think about just pushing off a video. We'll skip this week. We'll do one next week. I don't have time. But then I remember I got those Patreon supporters. They've been so generous to pledge a few dollars every month to support the channel. And it really helps motivate me. I just don't want to let them down. So thank you all. And if you're looking to pick up some spiderlings or new tarantulas anytime in the future, go ahead and join the Facebook group. All the members of our Facebook group get 10% off their purchases from Fear Not Tarantulas. Now technically, Fear Not Tarantulas does not sponsor these videos, but they're so generous in offering that discount to the Facebook members, I just have to give them a shout out. Well, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support, and I will see you next Tuesday.